Beep, beep, beep. Hello. Statistics. <laughs> he yelled. Let's talk about statistics, right? The Office of National Statistics. Welcome to the court of the E. Can you tell I'm feeling better? Right? <laughs> Welcome to the court of the EDI Jester. Now, some of you may know the, of the Office of National Statistics, right, who's been peering up its own gender backside, has screwed up the, sorry, screwed up the census. I, I mean badly, right? They've screwed it up so badly that there are more <clears throat> supposed trans people <clears throat> in some of the highest density Muslim communities we've got than there is in London. It's just insane. <laughs> right? So the bean counters have obviously not cor <laughs> correctly counted the beans, all right? Or they were high on something. Like, <laughs> how many you got? 255,000. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the ONS, the Office for National Statistics. Whom we rely on. I mean, there is a seriousness to this, let's be honest. You know, right, so every 10 years, who are we? What do we need to plan for the future? Can't do it now. Because they screwed it up, right? And now they're, they, it's an organisation, right? Uh, playing Darvo. An entire organisation playing Darvo. Deny, accuse, reverse victim offender, right? Okay? Government statistics body worried about triggering staff over transgender census question. Office for National Statistics suggested that employees might be impacted by furore over alleged over-reporting of numbers. Right, so what they're saying there is, right, okay, what they're saying there is that um, their staff are so weak, right, so weak at the Office for National Statistics. If there's anybody out there who works for the Office for National Statistics who's not a weak gender adult grievance gerbil, please pipe up in the comments. <laughs> they're so weak, right, that the very fact that there are being asked questions about this is enough to trigger them into some kind of psychosis <laughs> where somebody says the word did you get it wrong and they go ah! <laughs> and cry like a baby and throw their toys out the pram that's what they're saying our staff are so weak that they can't that, yeah, scrutiny and responsibility i'm sorry we don't do that here we only we're, we're a company that's based on social ideas so you can't do that because it's not inclusive so i'm sorry no we don't do we don't do scrutiny and responsibility. <laughs> ah. The Office of National Statistics suggested that staff might not feel safe after its methodology for, count for counting transgender people. Right, OK, clickety-click, either side, transgender people. Don't ever say that without doing that. Transgender people. Right, OK, because it really pisses them off. Um, after its methodology for counting transgender people in the census was questioned, the Telegraph can disclose. So just questioning it has triggered the staff. Are they all sat there in diapers? I'd like to know, at the ONS, is a serious question, how many of your staff shit themselves on a daily basis? <laughs> they have, they've probably got a psychiatrist in the basement. Go and see Brian! <laughs> Go on! Why? He's got, he's got tomazepam. Okay. <laughs> Go on, you buggers. Right. Senior leaders on the statistics bodies look up into Q plus staff network. It's another staff network. Close them down. Voice concerns about the impact on trans employees after it emerged that the census may be overestimated, may have overestimated the number of trans people because of a poorly worded question. Last year, academics queried, academics queried findings from the ONS, which suggested there were 262,000 people identifying as trans in England in the 2021 census. 0.5% of the population over 16. Yet, yeah, well, of course, there aren't. Right? That figure, for those whose main language was not English, was 2.2%. 2.2% of non-English speaking people are trans. <laughs> or... Or the question was wrong, which shouldn't have been in there in the first place. Right? It's gonna, you don't identify. So how many people in the census did we identify as thinking that they're Alexander the Great? Right? Or how many do we think were Florence Nightingale? Right? That hang around, hang around modern hospitals, dressed like a nurse from the Boer War, swinging a lantern with a candle in it. How you doing, Florence? 
I'll be, I'll be in a minute. Thank you. How many people think they're Florence Nightingale? How many people think they're a dragon? <laughs> so 2.2% of non-speaking English people are trans. Yeah. No. Right? So Occam's razor applies here, doesn't it? When all is said and done. The simplest example. The simplest answer is usually the right one. So we're going to go with uh, you screwed up. All right? In which case we then come along and go, excuse me, uh, we want you to, uh, we're going to scrutinise you and ask you to take some responsibility for your screw up. And your look a bit to Q club all clench their bum holes at exactly the same time. <laughs> uh, census respondents were asked, is the gender you identify with the same as your sex registered at birth? Well, that, that question is loaded beyond belief. It says, is, this, is, the, is the gender you identify with? I don't identify with a gender. I don't have a gender. The gender identity doesn't exist and they've got it in the census. Wait, I mean, the, I don't know what the best analogy is, right? It's like intermittent constipation. Every now and again, they turn up and block things. We need to flush the turds, don't we? Right? Get them out. The ONS should be sacking these people. The controversy led to a review by the Office for Statistic Regulation, which in October said that the ONS should have done more to communicate the inherent uncertainties relating to the data. On November the 8th, Jen Wolford, the ONS's Director of Population Statistics, said it continued to have confidence in our gender identity estimates at the national level. How can you have confidence in something that doesn't exist? <laughs> they are literally nuts. And how many people around the country, right, went, screw it, let's just stop, let's play with the system. It's insane that the question was even in there in the first place. What are you doing? I met with the ONS going back two and a half, three years ago, and said, you don't need to do this. So you do this, you're making a huge mistake. Oh, yeah, uh, uh. They don't listen to anybody. These people don't. You can't stop talking to them. Stop engaging with them. We just want them fired. Find something. You all did a great job, by the way, with the uh, London thing. Some warriors are out there photographing it <laughs> and sending stuff to people. The, 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 the chap, this, this, this wibbling bloke, right, who'd set himself up as some sort of look up at Q martyr, turns out back in 2010 he was saying awful things. He's, he's a misogynist, he hates women. It's just weird, some really weird shit going down on his Twitter account. And he then deleted his account, right? Because <laughs> obviously HR have gone, delete your Twitter account, love, we need to talk. It was a murder on the sexual orientation express, as I said. Murder on the Orientation Express. And I said, it's a good, uh, isn't it interesting that he's been no flat, the chap from Rail Track has been no platformed, right? <laughs> and then the puns came out, everybody went out. He has some good points. <laughs> ah. Ah. But he's gone, right? And not as he just, not just as he gone, the National Rail, look up at you, nutter group have gone as well. They've deleted their tweet. When are people going to get ahead around the fact that these, these affinity groups in your business and organisation are going to be in breach of the Equality Act sooner or later and somebody's going to take you to court? Disband them now. Now, if they want to get together and talk about crochet, you know, or uh, pointing for bricks or whatever it is they want to talk about, let them do it. But not in work time, right? There should be no affinity groups in work. You come to work, you do your job if you want enough to do it. If you're not, you need a trigger warning of the psychiatrist in the basement. Go home. <laughs> Other than that, do your job. Do your job, come in, do your job, get paid for your time, screw off. That is wrong with people. The Office for National Statistics. Oh, now I've dropped my phone. The Office for National Statistics. It's unbelievable. Go and read the article. Absolutely unbelievable. We're going to see more of this. GMC, Office for National Statistics, NHS, BBC. We're going to see more of this. And now Andy Burnham in Manchester is pushing this out to small businesses. Ooh, those cases are going to be painful because they're, they're going to end businesses. They're going to end family businesses. They're going to end small concerns. You know, if you're an employer with four employees and one of your employees, you employ a critical social justice nutbag, either a race one or a trans one, you're done. Once they start, you're done because they'll sue you. Or you'll get sued by your other staff. And there's Andy Burnham launching it yesterday in Greater Manchester. We're going to take our inclusivity and social responsibility to all the businesses in Manchester. Yeah, not if they've got any sense, Burnham. This all has to go, right? And I'm just waiting for the tourists to say they're going to do it. But they aren't. And Labour certainly aren't. Believe me. So we are, to a certain degree, snookered at the moment.
but not as snookered as the bloke that thought it was a good idea to be misogynistic and awfully peculiar uh, once he'd erected his um, look a bit of cue pillar in public. <laughs> he must be sweaty. <laughs> they need to take it down. They won't, but they need to. It was an abomination. Anyway, go on, that's enough. How much do you want from me? I'm going to go and do some shit. I'll see you later.